messages on screen to be updated and the information becomes available. This station will now see the information. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. Here are your hosts. Cam and Kobe. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast, the only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. We are your hosts, Cameron and Kobe, and we are ready to bring survival goodness direct to your ear holes. Let's rock this town. <laughs> Dude, National Podcast Day today. Yeah. You told me. That's, we need to make this that's something. the biggest deal ever. Yeah. This is what we do. Yeah, so welcome to episode 63. What are we doing today? Um... This is kind of a good one, I think. Uh, I always say that, but this one I really you really was excited think was about good. it because uh, it's a big, debatable subject. Mm-hmm. It's called Lone Wolf. Yeah, we're talking about the SHTF. Can you do it by yourself, Lone Wolf, or do you need others? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I yeah, think everybody needs others. Yeah, so we're going to talk about to that. One. So yeah, um, we got a. Uh, Atakabach. Yeah, we do. As well. Speaking so. of those boys, uh, today's podcast is brought to you by TacPack, the only monthly tactical subscription box with useful professional grade stuff inside. Get 10% off your first TacPack when you use our code CASUALPREPPERS at TACPAC.com and join the thousands of satisfied subscribers today. That is 10% off with our code CASUALPREPPERS uh-huh, at TACPAC.com. Uh-huh. Listener. Reviews Go. starts now. Go and yeah. get stuff from there. So, uh, listen to review. I don't know if you guys are in our Facebook group or not, but we got a really bad review this week, so that was a good one. I should have just done that one, but... I. It's the, the thing is, and and I had texted Kobe, too, that yeah. I'm like, we're not even offended by it, because it's like, <laughs> no, we know people are just going to be like, you guys are so stupid, I hate you. Yeah, you guys are dummies. I mean, our wives are borderline that oh, way. Oh, yeah. I'm, it could like, have been. Well, it I might have been was. your wife. I don't know. <laughs> it's very, very possible. I don't know. She listens to it quite a bit. She's become a a, a good listener. But, yeah. Um, she's a, yeah. She, <laughs> the, it, like, people like, oh, you guys are so annoying, but I kind of want to listen to you. Yeah, I know. No, we understand that we're like a polarizing type uh, yeah. in the prepper survival genre because we it's just, fine. we don't take ourselves too seriously. Okay? Yeah. We're just here having fun, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, this one, uh, this one came from iTunes. Um, it says, Hubby and I have been casually prepping for years, but without clear direction until I stumbled upon the Casual Preppers podcast. Thanks to these two extremely knowledgeable prof- professionals, I now have my baggy mom jeans, makeup remover, sog tomahawk, bag of Bic lighters, and some super glue with me every time I leave my house in case of an earthquake cane NATO, and the accompanying looting, riots, and rapes. They've taught me not to just taught me to not just be another idiot with a bullet wound. Cam and Kobe have even led me to the new urgent task of knitting my hubs some paracord underwear. (laughs) (laughs) These men deliver their knowledge about a variety of SHTF scenarios and add a lot of practical everyday information. Since their episode number 60, 25 Ways to Prep Free, the question of whether or not you listen to this podcast will most likely start showing up on registrations for hotels all over the country. Yes, their messages are just that powerful. So stay survived and give them a listen. You'll learn something new and simultaneously laugh to your sides hurt your ear holes will never be the same this is incredible that was a good one huh? <laughs> it was I, really long if we had like a, a prepper course in the university yeah <laughs> this would be the ultimate essay answer right here. yeah that was wonderful that was a wonderful. plus plus a plus plus and you guys are awesome so if you guys want to be a part of this portion of the podcast please go to itunes go to facebook go to the kindle book on amazon leave us a five-star review and make it awesome social media shout out today's the day Cameron. <laughs> is it? It's the day. Uh, we are handing out our um, hook and salute winner today. Today, sh- it's it. <laughs> hey, Rodney <laughs> Rod- Heath the second. Yeah, no, no, not senior. Rodney Heath the second. <laughs> Rodney Heath I I. Yes, sir. You uh, have done it. You have done it. You have won. <laughs> Thank you for your uh, hook and salute <laughs> out there in the weathers of, I think it was North Carolina. Something like that. Nice. Yeah, so... Uh, in the middle of all that you had to go through, Yeah. you still thought about it. You did. Mm. I don't know what it's to beautiful. say about that. It's a beautiful thing. So go ahead and uh, DM us your information, and we'll get you these brand new binos still on the plastic. You're going to be mm. looking at people all night. You're going to be looking Peep-tong. at your neighbors and whatnot, and <laughs> it's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's a mad, mad world. Right. All right. How mad do you want it? I want you to go as mad as you can go right okay, now. Okay, super mad. 
All right, so yeah, D A R P A. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I have DARPA. not. You've never heard of DARPA? DARPA? I haven't. Oh, that's anyway. like the the government entity that like does crazy. They test lots of like new. Yeah, crazy I, didn't, I don't know why I hadn't yeah. heard the whole acronym for him. Yeah, DARPA launches massive new AI next third wave next gen artificial intelligence. What? So here, I got to read just a little bit of this. The Pentagon Science and Technology Research Arm is launching a vigorous <laughs> push into a new level of advanced artificial intelligence intended to integrate advanced levels of machine learning, hmm. introduce, introduce more adaptive reasoning, and even help computers determine more subjective phenomena. Hmm. What does that make you think of? Well, I, I'm not really sure, but it like, sounds awesome. What do you awesome. think about like third generation AI? <laughs> Like iRobot and yeah. um, that like Terminator. That didn't end well. This is like Skynet stuff. Yeah, These know. computers, they're teaching them to like, instead of just giving them information, like one of the quotes by one of the nerd guys there, <laughs> Mr. Dr. Higginum, Dr. Or I don't know his name is. Dr. Head Nerd. If the underlying data changes, then your system was not trained against that. <laughs> and he says... Um, that is the future, building enough AI into the machines that they can actually communicate shared data and network at machine speed in real time. Oh, my God. It's kind of creepy. It's super creepy, man. Like, the the simple AI that we have now, like, records our stuff and sends it who knows where. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and just wait until they can make their own minds up and start Good. wreaking havoc on you. That's gonna, scary. I know. I think it's freaky. So, anyway, I thought I'd share that, that um, Skynet has started to be developed um robot uprising wasn't that one of our we were thinking about doing yeah it? we did that's what it that was. was what it was we're you're right that that's that the halloween episode yeah. that we talked about but that's not what we're doing this year no we got that one, one would be really good i'm it, gonna we'll keep that halloween one. episode's coming up kids and it's gonna be a dandy <laughs> robot uprising <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's what it was but anyways that's what this is all about yeah. um these guys we're gonna get smarter computers that are gonna soon just rule us so mm -hmm. pretty freaky it's super duper freaky man mm -hmm. okay so mine um it's just kind of funny, this article I read, um, and so I'm going to read it to yeah. you. I'm going to read it to you. Uh, Arizona man built dozens of pipe bombs because wife feared government collapse. <laughs> I just thought it was pretty funny. What so, weapon can I create that's going to stop everything? <laughs> a pipe bomb. Damn it, have you made those pipe bombs like I asked you to <laughs> last spring <laughs> and clean out the gutters? Why do you think I bought all that PVC? <laughs> PVC's been sitting in the garage. <laughs> Anyways, come on, Bert Gummer. <laughs> I know you can just hear Reba like like getting mad at him, you know. Um, so it's a, the 51 year old man accused of storing 30 pipe bombs in his Arizona home told law enforcement he began building them on the instructions of his estranged prepper wife, who feared the collapse of the government. <laughs> That's as far as I want to go with this. I just so thought it was his wife's idea. It was his wife's idea, but he did it. <laughs> oh, he had no choice. I know. That's what I'm saying. How how can they get mad at him for it? I know. <laughs> My wife told me I had to do it. I had two errands a day, make two pipe bombs. <laughs> I got 30 now. I got to do pipe bomb and I got to mold it back along. <laughs> what do you want me to do? I got milk to pick up, <laughs> bread, some soap, and gunpowder. <laughs> a little bit of fertilizer, you know. <laughs> this guy buys more fertilizer than I've ever seen. Yeah. It's Arizona. We don't have any lawn out oh, here. Oh, sure, my wife told me I had to. <laughs> what, you want to go talk to her? No, no, you're fine. <laughs> you're, Let's just get rid you're of it. You're fine. It's actually his ex-wife was the funny thing. He kept all the bombs. Yeah, I wonder what she's doing right now. Uh, that's that's my question. Just making all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so the world is mad, y'all. Hmm. <laughs> 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 So let's let's move on with the topic of the day. Yeah. Uh, today we're talking about uh, SHTF lone wolf in it. Like, how are you going to do it? What's it about? Is it possible? Is it stupid? Is it awesome? Is yeah, it yeah, all yeah. of the above? Uh, that's tough. Yeah, that's a tough one. Because my dream would be to be able to lone wolf it. <laughs> you like, cause well, it, yes. I want to be able to have that ability and those skills. But and we'll get into that. But. But in, now in you have reality. A, there's just man. You, you can't now because you have a family. No, unless exactly. you like straight up just say, <laughs> figure it out. It's like 1930s. <laughs> yeah, and I'm done. I'm d Things See, are crashing. See you later. Lost our money. I'm leaving. That's go, too hard. Go dig some ditches in California. <laughs> Gotta be some. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta so, be some work out there. Out let's, west. let's talk about uh, what what is it? What is being a all right? Wolf? Yeah. So what is a lone wolf? Huh? <laughs> Anybody know? <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> Talk out to your your uh, radio right now. Talk to your AI computer. Talk to computer. your AI phone right now. 
Um, so the dictionary definition of lone wolf is someone who prefers to live, act, or work alone or independent of others. This is true of the lone wolf prepper because they plan to go it alone, doing whatever it takes to defend themselves and survive in the SHTF. Yeah. So basically, a lone wolf is doing it all by herself. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds a little... It sounds kind of romantic a little bit Ooh. like, yeah, hey, let's put on some <laughs> romantic music. <laughs> let's get some it. flowers. Let's get it alone. Let's, let's get it do on. it alone. Wait, that sound. <laughs> yeah. <weird. laughs> I'm awesome. All right, now you're creepy. prepping with myself tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, it does sound. <laughs> Time to get myself ready for an apocalypse. <laughs> I'm gonna SHTF myself tonight. <laughs> Did you SHTF yourself in there? Every day I wake up and just SHTF everything I do. Uh, All right. I walked in, he was SHTFing himself. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, uh, so, but no, it is kind of like a romantic type, like, oh, I'm going to live off the grid by myself in the woods. I'm going to just do everything. I'm going to I'm gonna hunt. I'm going to fish. I'm going to survive yeah. all by my lonesome. Yeah. You know, like a little my side of the mountain type stuff. Yeah. You're the ultimate bad A. Yeah, exactly. So, what are the pros? <clears throat> yeah, wh- why would it even be Lone good? Wolf Pro, that sounds like some like, <laughs> subscription. Oh, dang, I'm going to get Lone Wolf Pro. I just got Lone Wolf Basic. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I just got a lot more pro. Look at all the stuff I got. Pro. Mm. All right, so let's talk about the pros. Yeah. Number one, so mobility. Um, yeah. It's way easier to just pick up and go. Like you don't have to worry about anything. Mm-hmm. You, you've got your own plan. You don't have to worry about getting the kids' shoes on, get their <laughs> socks on. Yeah. Get I your know. shoes on. Why have you changed? Like your Brush bug- your teeth. I know, so I'm going to bug out, and my kids would be like, I forgot my shoes. I know. Like two miles down the road. <laughs> like, what the? Barefoot. Yeah. Got their pack on. It's cold in the snow, <laughs> Dad. You know, it's like, come on. How did you not, how did you not put you- shoes on? <laughs> I've given you the past three years <laughs> to be ready for this. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot. I got a backpack full of snacks. <laughs> um, but, yeah, being able to just up and go at the, you know, at the SHTF moment. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, your the freedom to like change and tweak your plan on the fly. Like, there's no better than the Lone Wolf Pro it's method. True. Yeah. Um, number two, supplies. Uh, you don't need to stock up on as many things because you're just taking care of yourself. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a pro that most of the stuff that you can possibly carry. You know, you just have to worry about yourself, and yeah. it's really easy that way. You don't have to worry as much about scavenging because you can ration out things better. You know how long you know your items are going to last yeah. and when you have to get to that point of scavenging. Nobody's going to eat your last mountain house without asking no, type mm-mm. thing. No way. It's yours. And this is yours. You, you bought the dried uh, fat boy or yeah. ice cream sandwich. It's yours. And nobody's going to eat that. Yeah. So No rock, paper, scissors. You can scissors. be super selfish as a lone wolf. You can. I don't, you should have put that on a pro. I should have put number one. Selfishness. selfishness. Mm-hmm. Um, speed. You can, like I said before, on the mobility, you can just get up and go. Boom. Yeah. And if you're in a location and things go south, I mean, you don't have to coordinate anything. You just get the fudge out of there. Yeah, you just go. Um, no debates, no discussion, no plan of where to go. Uh, See, you yeah, just that, that to me is probably the, the best part is you're not worried about like – seven or eight other people like right. well i think that you know we got to do this because exactly i know about these things and this stuff is true and yeah. that stuff's not you <laughs> yeah. know what i mean it's, it's, i've been up that way uh, and that's really dangerous yeah the other thing too is um i didn't really put in there but the ability to you know maybe going over that mountain range with the family would be a nightmare mm. but maybe you know that way and it's like you're one person you're all for yourself like yeah you can kind of get in and out of places a lot easier and a lot faster. Um, your responsibility, your stress level of worrying about others and if they're prepared and if they're carrying and that doing their me, thing. That is, that's, that's huge. It, it is. Well, especially when you have a family because that's what – SHTF is just going to be so stressful. It, oh, and yeah. if you're worried about kids and a wife or, and a husband or whatever it is, that's that's going to be the hardest part is, yeah. is the stress of trying to make sure that they've got what they need and they're safe and yeah whatnot. think about all the conveniences that we have now oh yeah they have socks and shoes <laughs> yeah cereal bowl mm-hmm. you know get them all ready for school and they still can't get anything done yeah <laughs> and that's super stressful <laughs> it like, is. you're gonna catch you're gonna miss the bus yeah um but yeah your responsibility is a, 
only for yourself, which is mm-hmm. way easier. Um, if you're trained and prepared, um, yeah. way less stressful, even, you know, you, you're like, I've got all this stuff. I know this whole plan and, and I can tweak and adjust everything about it. That, that to me would be way less stressful. Yeah. But, um, as we'll talk about, there's a lot of other things. Um, and then less threat. This is kind of debatable. I mean, yes, you're on your own, but mm-hmm. um, people might feel less threatened by one person versus a group. I know. You know so they don't I feel like they need would. to take that out. Yeah. You know, uh, he's on his own. You know, if he really wanted to come at us, like yeah. he's going to get killed because yeah, we so have several others. Yeah. If there's, you're with four or five guys and y'all got a gun or something, you're going to be like, oh. Yeah. So if you're just by yourself, you know, running around with backpack, yeah. uh, you know, purple purple or pink hoodie. Jansport. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you're going to be fine. So you're a little less, um, you're less of a concern to others. You're Mm -hmm. also, I mean, you're a target too, if you're by yourself in in some scenarios. But for the most part, people aren't going to be as freaked out. Plus, if you're, you know, maybe you do need something and and you want to go into another group, they're probably a little less freaked out about that. Yeah. You know, wow, it's one dude by himself, you know. We're going to be fine. Yeah, yeah. we can handle this one dude. You you have a little more maneuver a little maneuverability Mm -hmm. is that a word i like it of like being able to you know maybe i am going to go get some stuff from this group or trade and you're just not as big of a threat because they don't yeah i mean they might worry what's behind you or watching Mm -hmm. but but for the most part one person is a lot less of a threat to me than like six guys that are all tattooed up yeah wearing black leather yeah and this looks scary yeah i'm scared right now (laughs) just you saying that black leather guys yeah (laughs) i don't like it um yeah so so there's there's a lot of pros. To there me. is a lot of pros to being a lone wolf. And then on the on the opposite side of that, what are the disadvantages? A lot of this is the same. You know, the pros yeah. to being a lone wolf and the disadvantages of a group. So let's just look at like now, the like specific. I said that it is kind of rom- that romantic. Oh dang! Oh dang! Look, at this. I could just picture myself walking mm-hmm. in the woods with all my gear. Got a big old beard. Set up a tent one night. Next yeah. night, just keep going deeper in the woods. Mm-hmm. Sounds so sweet. It but. really does. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said, you know, what are the disadvantages of a group? So as a, you know, lone wolf versus group is basically what we're talking about today, but we're on the, we're on the pro lone wolf side right now. So what are the disadvantages if you went with a group? And a lot of these, like I said, are advantages for on the other wolf. side. Yeah. On the lone wolf. So the first one is I wrote down loose lips, sink ships, you know, OPSEC is a lot harder when you have like 20 people or even five people Definitely. trying to keep people to shut up about what what your plan is or where your gear is why we're just sitting around yeah you need to be doing something (laughs) yeah exactly um you know you don't want people telling your neighbors where all your gear is you don't want people you know what i mean it's harder to keep five mouths shut than it is to keep one mouth shut no definitely yeah like you said it's slower moving with a group um have you ever gone on vacation somewhere with like a whole bunch of people oh it always is a, a joke it's like you can't go anywhere. Yeah. It takes like forever to yeah. go like a block. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's, even when I go to a theme park with somebody. Oh, gosh, it's horrible. You know, it's like, well, let's go to this ride. Oh, my kids want to ride this yeah. one. Well, I need to go pee. And then yep. you just. Yeah, you you're just, done. You explode and just go all Like, can you directions. imagine if you're trying to bug out with like eight a or crowd? ten people or something? Yeah. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, no way. Not going to be an easy thing. Um, it, when you're in a group, if somebody else is trying to get to you, if they're trying to track you, it's going to be much easier to do that, <laughs> to find a group than it is to find one yeah. dude, you know? Yep. That's definitely a disadvantage of a group. Um, you're going to consume way more food. You're going to consume way more supplies. You're going to need more med supplies. You're going to need more gear. You're yeah. going to need more of everything. Um, so and as kind as you want to be, there's always yeah. going to be an over consumer. Oh, there is. Absolutely. If you're helping out people and yep. you know, you may fall into that too, but mm-hmm. it's just like, there's going to be s- s- some hugely <laughs> frustrating thing. I just think about it. I'm like, oh, I know I'm already mad. I'm already pissed off. Yeah. So well, eat that. So that's why, that's why <laughs> I know it's like, you have to you get find that happy medium, a big enough group to be able to cover all your bases, but small enough that you don't want to shoot half of them. You yeah. know, like seriously, exactly. that's going to be the hard thing. And the next part... That's um, not the corner you crap in. <laughs> it's over there. That's a crap corner, dummy. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's my sleep corner. Why'd you crap on my pillow? I got to sleep on your dookie. <laughs> yeah. um, the, the worst part to me is going to be group dynamics. Uh, when everybody gets together, they're always like one or two buttholes in a group. Oh, yeah. Like always, no matter what. Alpha male. Yeah. Leadership struggles. Like, you know, I'm the leader. I'm the yeah. toughest. I'm the tallest. You know? <laughs> I can run the fast. Who made you fearless leader? <laughs> yeah. Who put you in charge? Because you got a stupid podcast, think you can <laughs> lead this group. 
You know what I mean? Yep. There's always going to be something We saw like it in that. Tremors. We did. We saw it in <laughs> Walking Dead. We did. Always see it. There's mm-hmm. always a, one that wants the power. It's inevitable. Control. It's going to happen. <laughs> um, like, oh, and then we saw this in The Walking Dead, too, uh, trying to keep people's wives and husbands away from other wives and husbands. True. If you're living in a tight-knit group and people are like, oh, I'm cold. Can I just snuggle up with you and my husband's out capturing rabbits or something? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> And it's going to happen. He's out taking care of the hamsters tonight. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? He's on hamster duty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cold. I'm cold. Mm. <laughs> it's a romantic. And this, oh, weren't you a lone wolf once? <laughs> <laughs> I want to SHTF alone, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not busy. Are you busy? <laughs> Let's get busy together. Let's get busy. Uh, so anyways, that group dynamics are going to be a huge issue in a group. <laughs> you know? um, <clears throat> noise. It's hard to get 10 people to oh shut my gosh. up. It's really easy for me to shut up. I can be quiet. I, I can too. But then when there's 10 people and some of them are children or yeah. some of them are dummies, it's hard to keep them quiet. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> it's really, really hard. That's probably the thing I yell about the most in my house. Oh, it is. Yeah. Like, Why are you so loud? Or, or like, I think they're I just was, talking like, like inches yeah. apart and mm-hmm. they're yelling. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, why? It's maddening. It really is. It's really bad. I just, I know I'm going to kill somebody. Like, I just get so annoyed with people. I do too. And like the That's stupidest things. That's why I'm like things. a morning person. I like to get up in the morning because it's like there's nobody it's talking. Yeah. And, ugh. Like for me, like listening to somebody chew and oh, uh, I, it literally is something that's going to give me a heart attack one day. Like, I, or I'm going to pull out a, <laughs> a knife and stab somebody in the trachea. Yeah. Like it's going to happen. I know. Like at the movies. Yeah. I did is I literally <laughs> have never been more mad when I sit in the movies and there's a guy behind me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Eating popcorn. I'm like, what on <laughs> earth is going on back I there? Know. And then you keep doing like the half turn, like you know, look yeah. at him, like, come on, bro. And then they're opening a thing of you know, junior mints for like 25 <laughs> minutes trying to get him out. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I hate people so bad. I do too. I really do. Yeah, could you imagine <laughs> all sleeping together in a warehouse oh, and just hear like it. just roll your head over and you hear <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> Yeah. And you're just like ah! <laughs> somebody's eating. I'm something gonna blow off tonight. Yeah, screw you guys. I'm gonna sleep outside. It's not worth it. Yeah. <clears throat> um concealment and shelter are gonna be much tougher to find for a big group of people. You know, I can yeah. I can slip underneath a truck if I have to and sleep if it's raining. But I can't get like ten people under a truck, <laughs> right? No. Come on, guys! We're sleeping under here, under this F one fifty. We're gonna stay the night. <laughs> you Come know? on, bear, bear. give me this Ranger. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's a yeah. It's anyways. That's gonna be much harder. Um, <clears throat> another thing, a dumb like one dumb decision by one idiot in the group yeah. is gonna affect everybody. That is the freaking truth. You know what I mean? And yep. so it's hard to keep people in line, and that yeah. you know, and then trust. It's hard yep. to trust people. It's I have diabetes and I don't have any of my meds. You're like, <laughs> well, I'm going to leave you back here on this tree stump to think about it while we go <laughs> to the next You better cure camp. that overnight because. Yeah. Exactly. So those are um, sort of my, my list of the disadvantages of being in a group. A group is going to be a nightmare. It, it is. is. And I'm I, like, I think about that all the time. I'm like, <laughs> my kids, like when I went on this little RV trip to Yellowstone, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, close quarters, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> and I'm like thinking about like if I pull in more people, yeah, like take because oh you think about gosh. it. If you were SHTF, uh, you know, and it, even if it was like your family and my family in an RV, Me, my brother and sister and their kids, you kill each other. I, yeah, you would you would have to have so much self control. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, living in tight quarters, so Oof, anyway, scary. It's gonna be tough. <laughs> yep. Real quick, I wanted to talk about. Before we go on, survival boxes. Mm. Survival boxes are the only subscription box packed with all the essential survival supplies that you need to prep for surviving disasters, emergencies, or your next outdoor adventure. There are many boxes to choose from, so you can order the survival food, water, and gear required for your survival plan. Sign up today. Mm. Get survival boxes delivered to your doorstep every month. No contracts. Cancel any time. Use promo code CASUALPREPPERS for 10% off your first box on any subscription or store order at survivalboxes.com. If you want to just be lazy and get stuff going, this is the way to go. This is absolutely the way to go. Food, gear, boom. Yeah, you're done. Every month. You don't have to worry about it. always good stuff. Yeah, always good stuff. I'm always happy with their food. I'm always happy with everything. always delicious. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so talking about lone wolf, you know, we talked about the pros of being a lone wolf. What are the cons? Lone wolf or con? 
Is that what it says? No, it says Lone Wolf Con. But oh. I'm surprised I see what they you don't mean. have that. Like Lone Wolf Con 2019. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> and one person shows up. <laughs> oh. I made it. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you're a Lone Wolf. Why are we grouping up? Get yeah. out of here. Exactly how I planned it. Um, <clears throat> so, what are the cons? So, uh, uh, we've talked about this book before, but uh, Jonathan Hollerman wrote a fantastic book called Survival Theory. Um, I'm going to read just a quick couple of paragraphs. I'm not yeah, going to read, read all this. this Lone Wolf it's, stuff. It's, it's really good. I like his. The way he puts so it. So th- he says, the number one absolute positive, you're going to die a mistake, is to take the lone wolf approach. And this is a dude that knows. He absolutely knows. And let me show you why he knows. So first off, he says, I'm speaking from experience. I've actually done it. I've spent an entire month in the mountains of Washington State during January with six feet of snow on the ground, almost no food, and very limited supplies during my training to become a SEER instructor. During that month, I lost over 15 pounds. See, so he's 6'4". One four, month. Yeah, he was 6'4", 190 pounds, and he was 19 years old. That's a freaking ton of weight. Yeah. He said, I can make a solid prediction that 99% of people that go this route will not make it through the first winter. That's crazy. I mean, that's a dude that's done it. He understands what it is. And if you think that you're just going to lone wolf it, you're going to go out in the, in the wilderness and hunt. I think he says a couple of things here. He's like, meat's going to be the hardest thing. The number one thing I hear from the lone wolves on how they will survive is by hunting. Yeah. <clears throat> and we've talked about this before. I've, I've actually hit this topic several times because mm-hmm. I, I think when people say that, they don't understand what they're saying. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, what, they, well, what he says is what they don't understand is that with thousands of other lone wolves roaming the forest combined with all the other locals who are also going to be out hunting for their family sustenance the first few months, there won't be a single deer or other big game alive within a month after yeah. SHTF. That is so true. It's going to happen. Oh, definitely. It's already hard right now. Hunting well, season. Well, we live in an area with like people that have tons of guns. Yeah. And they're all, you know, they all have <laughs> skills in hunting. Yeah, Half the they're town hunts. wipe. It'll be the gone so fast. The <laughs> like literally, there won't be a deer left. No, there won't mm-hmm. be an elk left. There won't be a moose left. The cattle anywhere. and everything. Everything's going to be dead. So if you think that that's the route that you're going to take as a lone wolf, that you're just like I'm just going to live off the land, roam around. There's no way. It's not going to happen unless you're vegetarian. You may have a better chance. And even then, no, it's you're not. Very hard to to find enough. Yeah, especially you know I mean? <clears throat> in a winter month. You know. Exactly. So. That's that just yeah, no, preface. I was that thinking this. a lot about this too after like I'd read it and, and I was thinking about how so me for example, I don't have any big game hunting skills at all. You're learning that. and I've been learning. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. And I was thinking of how much better and how much easier it is with Tyler that's been showing us when yeah. he's calling the, yeah. the elk in and, exactly. and I'm just ready. You're like, just ready. Yeah. How and much better and easier to hunt together yep. if you're, I mean, the hunting thing is still going to be a struggle, but to have somebody with you watching your back and to, to do that part, I'm like, oh. It's yeah, going to make it a lot there's easier. There's no way I could do it, but yeah. but to have additional people with you plus to pack that freaking meat, mm-hmm. you know, and get back, not freeze to death that night. There's exactly. just all that stuff. So. There's a lot that goes into it. So anyway. That let's preface this whole con situation with that from a guy who really understands it. You know, you probably don't <laughs> trust us to tell you that what's good and yeah. what's bad, but this yeah. guy understands. So <clears throat> go check out his book, and he's actually releasing Survival um, Theory 2 or something like oh, that really? really soon. Yeah, so you have to look for that. So another con, you are doing all the work all the time. You yeah. literally have no rest ever. No, that's Everything, huge. Yeah. No e- sleepy. Everything that you have to do you have to do like nobody else can help you with exactly it. everything so that's pretty freaking hard um and one of those things is security um how like how would you ever get a good night's sleep I, there's no way <clears throat> i mean if I mean? it was a real hostile environment or it mm-hmm. became that i'd be terrified i can't even sleep in the dark i know out in, in the, the woods like in the woods stuff now and i know that there's probably no threats yeah I'm like can, i can't imagine knowing there's like marauders and looters and i'm like Ooh. yeah so i would so, never sleep so think about that how are you going to get a good night's sleep and that alone like sleep deprivation and not i mean you're in trouble exactly right off the bat yep uh so that's that's gonna be uh really hard um so th- another thing is being alone is mentally tough especially um over a long period of time right it really starts messing with your brain. It doesn't take very long either. Cause like, mm-hmm. like when my family goes out of town or something, or, you know, my kids and my wife, I'm yeah. like, Oh, freedom. Mm-hmm. That first night is cool. And then after that, I'm like, kind of like, what the freak do I do? Did I hear something upstairs? Yeah. And yeah, I'm like, I just, 
I like I immediately missed the conversation with my yep. wife and, mm-hmm. and even hearing my kids scream until they get back five minutes later. I yeah. want to freak out. It only takes like five but minutes. But <laughs> it does not take very long at no. all to like immediately feel yeah. like alone and, and, and kind of like, well, this kind of sucks. Yeah. Mentally, it is going to be so hard, yeah. especially if you're really not ever like having conversations with anybody, you know? Right. Um, so they've done a lot of studies, you know, it, it, when you are alone or you're lonely and you're not around a lot of people, you absolutely have a shorter lifespan. So your health is just not really? going to be as good. I believe it. <clears throat> Depression is something that sneaks in quite frequently in those people. Right. And I guarantee you, if you're lone wolfing it for like over a month or, or even longer, Depression is going to start coming. Yeah. Like, I don't care what you say. It's going to happen because. No, it will. I agree. Because people are built biologically to to communicate with each other, to be with each other. And if, when you're not having any of that sort of contact with people. Yeah. You're going to get jacked up. Well, it's up. like when you, like, if you go on a vacation for a long period, you know, you're like, you enjoy being with your family and everything. Mm-hmm. But after time, like, I miss work. Yeah. And I, I miss interacting with different people. Different people. And it's kind of yeah. like. Yeah, you need that. I mean, it's a natural thing for a human mm-hmm. to to need and and being completely by yourself in the dark, yeah. in a hostile environment, and knowing that you know your life's in th- like threatened. threatened. It's like that. How that would just destroy you mentally. It'd be so so tough. Um, you you start losing mental sharpness actually pretty quick because you're not using a lot of parts of your your brain that you're used to using all the time, right? Like communication and and teamwork skills and all those types of things. You're not doing it anymore. I'm not even in the mood to <laughs> SHTF myself. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't even get, I couldn't even SHTF myself tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's not I'm good. Lonely. Yeah. So it's hard to stay, it's hard to stay happy. It's hard to stay optimistic. And those are things that in that scenario, you have to have, yeah. you're not, you're I not going to make like, it. Once your supplies are depleting, you're like, yeah, whoa, <laughs> exactly. I'm in trouble. Uh-huh. Um, so combat or defense against a group is basically impossible. Yeah, you did. Uh, you know, you're not Steven Seagal. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> you can't crack a bunch of hands. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Uh, so, like, if you. You're not Jet Li. Yeah, if, if you go up against more than, like, two people, you're in trouble. Yeah. In, I mean, unless you're, like, a Navy That's SEAL. That's true. It's the, the truth. Unless you're a freaking Navy SEAL or a Green Beret or something like that, you're just, you're done. Yeah. You and know? They, even they can get caught off. Even they, yeah. It's going to be very, very tough. So that's going to be a situation that's going to be really hard for you. Um, another thing is, you know, as a lone wolf, you can only carry so much, yeah. especially if you're a lone wolf that's kind of on the move all the time. Right. Um, you are going to be constantly, like, all the time, every single day, looking for food and looking for water. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're with a group, you have all these other people to help do those things or, yeah. or to help carry something else or to, you know, maybe you're staying in one place so you can, you can start hoarding stuff, you know, stockpiling stuff. Yeah. And so. Well, people to keep you in check too. Like I'm, <clears throat> I'm one of those that's like, if I have my mindset on something, so like we need to get to this place. Yeah. I won't eat or anything. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm focused so much on one thing that I won't take care of myself very well. And it's like, somebody needs to be there. You know, you need that mm-hmm. of like, have you slept? Yeah, have you, exactly. Have you eaten? Yep. Like, you, you got to slow down. And, and that's, that's true. What, I you could push yourself into a, a big problem. Yeah, I didn't think about that because that's true. Like, a lot of times you need somebody there. To when you're just all say, stressed, your adrenaline's like yeah. maxed out. You're not going to be doing you're it. Like, you're oh, going to take care of your body. This is a good idea. This is the thing I we have to do. in two weeks. <laughs> this is a bad thing, I think. <laughs> you know, when did I? I don't know. When was the last time you took a dump? <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> I think it was Tuesday. Tum tum hurts all day. Yeah. Bad. Um. Okay. So think about this. Think about getting sick. I know that. That what? right there is the one big thing that scares me. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I don't. Well, like, I guess I'll rest in one and place it, and get. Yeah. Well, I guess I can't do that. And it really wouldn't take much of a sickness. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing that like you need flu. somebody that can look at you objectively. You know, just yeah. be like, you look horrible. Yeah, you're not looking good, you bro. Know? You just had two seizures. Did you know that? Well, and then also, like, you need somebody to take care of you. Yeah, you, you know do. what I mean. How? What if you you all of a sudden you've got massive diarrhea and you get, you're puking? Yeah, and you don't have water. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, who's going to get you water? You Nobody can't get out, and you can't move because you know how that feels. Or you compound fracture your lower leg. Yeah. It's like you can't crawl out and get all the things you need. No. Have you ever yeah. played Daisy? When you fall and break your leg, you're done. Yeah. You just lay there. there ain't nobody there. <laughs> there. Ain't nobody there to help you. <laughs> you just crawl across the entire map <laughs> yeah. and waste six hours of your life. Exactly. Um, and so <laughs> speaking of that, cascading failures become something that is a big deal. So if you get yeah, sick, 
Um, you'd say you're you're down for a week or something like that. So for that week, you how far behind you are? Yeah, you're a week behind. Alive. Yeah, like you, you, it's a week less of finding food. It's a week less of getting water. That's you know security has been down for a week. You don't know what's happening. Um, it just keeps things just keep going down you right. know you keep having failures of all these different things because of one tiny little issue of, of a stomach bug or something yeah. like that you know well you think you hear about stories of like someone's you know this person was in a car accident up in mm -hmm. the mountains and they got out alive you don't hear that and that story isn't like a big deal because that does not mm -mm. hardly ever happen. no dude like everybody dies in that yeah. scenario well like, then speaking of that first aid limitations becomes a big thing you know what i mean how do you splint your own broken leg yeah like gets, when you're in that much pain exactly like, what if you broke a femur yeah what are you gonna do i know <laughs> my fear is always falling and like breaking your spine you're like uh, ah! can't do anything yeah, you're crawling just, with your jaw. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, not gonna happen. Yeah, uh, brain power becomes uh, knowledge something. is power. Knowledge is power. <laughs> the more you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, but really, you know, you you can only know so much. I can only know so much. Yeah. With a group, you have such a huge advantage. And even if somebody isn't like a survivalist, they have knowledge of a lot of different things. Exactly. You know what I mean. Um, it's just like, you know, you get somebody like you in the group. Oh, we have some really good first aid knowledge now, right? Right. Um, but you probably don't have any idea how to build a house or fix a, exactly. a roof. Well, even even within medicine, like my exactly. limitation, I have tons. Yeah. And so do millions of doctors. Like yeah. there's a specialist special. for family. There's a surgeon. The mm -hmm. surgeons don't really know anything about the medications. Like yeah. I, I have... The same thing, you know, I call and ref like every day I have to call specialists on certain things. And then, mm -hmm. you know, even some of the doctors I talk to, it's like, I don't know what this medicine's for. I figured I'd send it back to you. And, you know, it's like we yeah. all bounce off each other. That's just within the, the medical, medical realm, you know, yeah. it's just like there's so many things that so many like different aspects of people can bring to a group. And that, yeah. that's a huge thing. It is a humongous thing. And that's probably one of the biggest when it comes down to it. Uh, skills and knowledge. Yeah, um, mixed. Yeah, and then the last thing I have on here is gear. Basically, you want a banker from Boston. Yeah, because they will get you across the Oregon Trail. Yes, <laughs> they will caulk that <laughs> they wagon. They can buy and the float. most flour and <laughs> yeah. the most ammo to I hunt always, along the way. I always caulk my wagon and float across. That's what I do. Oh, I always hired an Indian. Oh, did you really? They never would uh -huh. sink that. Really? Yeah. So yeah, I was just a I little just more talked about Oregon Trail this week too. Oh, really? This is the second time. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> One of them weeks about Oregon Trail. I guess we kind of live in close to that. Maybe yeah. that's why. But um, okay, and then the last thing is is gear. You know, in a group. So when you're a lone wolf, like you can never carry all the gear you're always going to need. No. Like it's going the, to be impossible. All the stuff that's convenient. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're in a group, you know, you can carry kind of a cross section of gear. Like I can have an axe. You can have a shovel. This person can have a gun. This person can have like a big old machete knife. You know, this person can have like all the cooking and camping equipment. Yeah. And if we need to move, we can basically take everything. Right. You know what I mean? Because you know, we're all in a group. We're going to be together. But when you're a lone wolf, you can only carry, I mean, after 60 pounds, it's tough to walk. You know yeah. what I mean? On yeah. your back. And so that's going to be even you, simple, like comfort stuff. Like when we were on, on the RV trip. Mm -hmm. We cooked a bunch of eggs and like, you know, I was like, this is going to be sweet. And I'm like, I ate it and I was like, oh, I need some salt. I don't have any effing salt. <laughs> we had no That's salt bad. and pepper. You know, it's uh, like, yeah. you know that that yep. somebody in the group's going to have that little item that you're, yep. you got macaroni and cheese. Yeah, oh, good. exactly. So that's that's one of those things that's going to be a huge deal. I think is you know being able to carry that cross section of gear between ten people instead of just yeah. one dude trying to figure out. Well, I can either take my cooking <laughs> yeah. stuff or I can take a gun. What yeah. am I going to do? You know, so. I'm going to pack my meds. Yeah, <laughs> and I can't pack bullets. You can't pack bullets. Yep, exactly. So, um, yeah, those those are awesome things. I mean, that sounds like yeah, pretty much impossible. Yeah, it does. <laughs> um, so let's talk about now after we've talked about the annoyances of a group, yeah. like what are those advantages of a group? Um, number one is that protection and strength. And protection alone has so much you know, involved in it. It's like you can sleep, you can have peace of mind, um, mental health and all that stuff goes into that. Um, 
Even wolves hunting packs. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, lone wolf. What, you, you never see a wolf by itself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you do, but it you, happens. It's not like it's going to attack you. That's no. the one that bolts out of the way. It's you know? the pack. That's what, that's how they all stay alive. Is they live in a pack, right? You know so, what I mean? same thing. You get this. You get the group. You have a strength to defend yourself, and you know, mm-hmm. or just start like the Walking Dead. Um, just start killing everybody too. Yeah, exactly. Just start turning evil yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, more protection, security, um, that's huge. Depression, you have people to talk to and you have, you know, you can talk about those things that are, that are bothering you and it, mm-hmm. it just, it gives you the, that peace of mind. It's like this person's in the same scenario I am in yeah. and they're frustrated with things and they're depressed and, and that helps. That's, you know, you know and it's therapeutic. I think the biggest thing is just being able to like, tell a joke to somebody or like a buddy or just like say yeah. something stupid yeah because that'll keep yeah your... as a lone wolf how do you joke about like this the, the situation <laughs> you can't yeah. yeah you can't that guy just got his head cut off <laughs> i lost my pinky <laughs> hilarious no it's not funny to yourself <laughs> yeah, this not... is where you're just like Ooh! i know the other dude like you don't need your pinky idiot yeah. you know what i mean? lost my pinky look dude <laughs> me too <laughs> yeah yeah no it's way it's way better it's gonna get yeah. you way further it makes total sense why your lifespan as a lot longer longer when you have people so exactly um if they don't kill you and drag if they don't kill you supplies obviously in a group you're going to have tons more to choose from and you can consolidate all your items Mm -hmm. you're not going to have every little piece of gear like kobe was saying yeah every little um uh, food and and ways to prepare food you just you're not going to have it all and when that shtf you know comes about you're going to realize wow i'm glad that you know, this person stocked up on this. I never even think about that. Yeah. I see that all the time. And Kobe has stuff that I'm like, well, that's a good idea. I need to go do that. And then I just break in his window and, yeah. I, and I steal his stuff. No, but even you, like, you know, you've given me some medical supplies. You're like, ah, I got a bunch of this stuff. Yeah. Here, take yeah, it. No, I, you yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. And then a, he's, and you're like, huge access to yeah. bandages and all that. You're like, if SHDF comes, I know you have some at your house. I got some in my house. Exactly. We're going to be all right. You know, it's almost like your house is my cash. Exactly. <laughs> Um, skill mix, like we were talking about, just having mm, that sounds good. Skill mix, oh, some skill mix. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is good. Yeah. This is some. Are you hungry? I got some skill mix. <laughs> oh, General Mills skill mix is out. <laughs> General Mills. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't know everything in your own profession, and then you know you think you're Rambo, you think you're uh, you're freaking Steven Seagal, like you said. <laughs> I don't want to come back, Steven Seagal. <laughs> that guy, he knows everything. <laughs> But um, those collected skills are going to get you way further, um, help you uh, in every way, uh, mm-hmm. build um, bunkers, and <laughs> build guns, yeah, bombs, pipe bombs. Pipe bombs. <laughs> you never know who's going to have 30 pipe bombs to yep. deliver to your group. Yeah. You're never going to know. And then that sleep issue, you know, that's a huge thing because sleep deprivation, Jeez. I've talked about it, I think, in yeah, uh, the medical tip mm-hmm. of what it leads to, depression, anxiety, poor uh decision making and that i mean that alone is going to kill you you just feel like Slowly. garbage you don't want to do. do anything man you do. i feel like that at least once a week yeah I there's do always too. that one night yeah um if not more but yeah huge is getting the ability to sleep and somebody to to let you do that mm-hmm. um packing being able to transport all of your crap that you've you know spent years storing you know in, in say your area is compromised you have a group that they can move all that and, yeah. and there's no way you can take all that with you. So it's like you prepared all that stuff and you're probably going to lose it as a lone wolf. Even if, yeah, your group has four or five vehicles, you exactly. know, and you're moving, you can you right. know, stuff. And stuff even in if you want to come back to it as a lone wolf, that may be impossible. Yeah. Somebody could be just living in your place. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then shared tasks and burdens, you know, just that simple stuff, you know, hygiene and cleaning up the crap in your facility. Yeah. Or uh, if you're sick, who's going to take care of you? Who's going to be on guard, um, you know, growing crops and stuff. It's like you're doing all of that by yourself as a lone wolf. <laughs> yeah. It, not only are you depressed and sleep deprived and, you know, you don't have the skills to do all those things efficiently. Man, it just sounds Yeah, it horrible. sounds really tough. So it's, tell me, you know, say, okay, I've listened to you guys. I understand the, the pros and the cons. I want to do it. I still. This is, this is my I'm better bag. off on my I'm going to do it. So it. If you were going to do it, how would you do it? What kind of gear would you need? Yeah. So basically, I went through this, and it's almost just like a basic bug out bag, but you're just going to have to have a little more than normal. Right. 
and it's I guess it's more than a bug out bag. It's more of like a um, a roller bug an out inch bag. bag. <laughs> like I'm never coming home. Like yeah, exactly. This is it. You know what I mean? So you're obviously gonna have to have water. Um, so I want to. It's gonna be a pod bug out bag. A pod. <laughs> you know, like yeah, those transport pods. Pod. So you're gonna have to go. Oh, so it, it's it's so hard because you're gonna have to go somewhat light. You yeah. can't you can't have. 60 pounds on your back and do 50 miles or, or 20 miles a day if you had no. to. You couldn't do it. Yeah. That's too much weight. So you want to keep it around like 30, 35 pounds to be bearable and to be able to keep going. Yeah. So that's going to be the really hardest part, I think. So the first thing, like I said, is water. You're going to have to have a water bottle um, You know, that's going to be able to carry some water. You're also going to have to have like a, a purification uh, device of some sort, You know, probably like a Sawyer Mini. It's going to do 100,000 gallons, plus it's tiny and it doesn't weigh anything, yeah. right? Uh, you're going to have to have some food. You're going to have to water, wait. Water is so frustrating. It is. It's always frustrating. It's like it's the number one thing you need. It's it's heavy. Mm-hmm. It's bulky. It's huge. It's hard to access. <laughs> yeah. And the places to get it, a lot of people are going to be around. Yeah. It's just the worst It's going to be super tough, you know. Um, you know, though, as a lone wolf, you can get by pretty easily because you're not worried about like three other people with you. It's true. You can have just a little amount per day, you know, yeah. get from water source to water source if you need to. Um, so there are some advantages, but still sounds like a horrible time. Uh, food, you're going to have to wait to boil some water to cook some food, right? Because you're going to have to have some sort of dehydrated food, at least at the beginning yeah. to get you through the, that first There's piece. more water issues. Yeah. A small pot. You're going to have to have some utensils, right? Um, and then some fire. Pop? Pop. <laughs> pop. You're going to have some pot uh, and yeah. some pop. Mm-hmm. Uh, fire. You're going to have to have at least three ways to make a fire. You're going to have to have a lighter, a ferro rod, and some tinder because once uh, stuff gets wet, good luck making a fire. I don't care how good you are. It's so hard, <laughs> it especially is. alone. It you know what I mean? Off. It really is tough. Um, so, and then I wanted to go to the bag. You're going to need a larger backpacking style bag. You're not going to be able to do this with like one of those 511 like day packs because no. especially with the lone wolf, because you're going to have to stuff as much food in there. Every time you find food, you're gonna have to stuff it in there as yeah. much as you can and water. Uh, so you're going to have to have like one of those big, like three day backpacking type bags. Um, it's going to have to be comfortable because you're going to be moving across the land and waterproof. And it's going to have to be thing. rugged. You don't want to cause any injury. Exactly. That's yeah. That's something you're going to deal mm-hmm. with. Um, knives. You're gonna have to have a couple of knives. You're gonna have to have uh, a sturdy survival knife for you know making tinder, for self defense, for field dressing animals, whatever that might be. And then you should you probably want like an EDC knife for like everyday cutting and stuff like that yeah. as well. Just your basic cuts. Just your basic. Yeah, a multi tool. Lone wolfer must have a multi tool. Uh-huh. I don't care what you say. No, the defense. This is gonna be the hard part. You're you're gonna be a target, I think. Yeah. Because you're gonna to want to walk around one fish in front of <laughs> one you fish all the time. Yeah, exactly. Branches you can brush off. Yeah. Uh huh. Basically, you're gonna wear those those battle box like jungle. Oh, those, you're gonna wear those knee pad things. Yeah, yeah exactly. at all times. So you, I think, if you are even considering lone wolfing it, you have to have firearms. You do. I just don't. That's think the ultimate you can do defense it without. weapon. It really. I mean. You can't do it without it. No, you can't. I don't care what you say. <laughs> no, I agree. I don't 100%. care how much karate you yeah. know. Yeah, you're not Morgan off from The Walking Dead. You you're can't not. use your stick. Exactly. You're not going <laughs> to so hit stupid. everybody with a freaking pole. Yeah. Your bow staff ain't going to cut it, all right? There's all these people with, like, AKs and ARs. And yeah. Just like, come on. Come on. Donatello this shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> didn't he have the bow staff? <laughs> Donatello. I can't remember. <laughs> he should be having it. They sh- too bad he doesn't have a little turtle shell. I know. <laughs> he should have That'd a turtle That'd be so freaking shell. funny. Uh, uh, Would have made the show better. I'm like a black Donatello. <laughs> um, hey. Yeah. Whoa, be careful now. with that. Can't be Turtles racist. will be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways. <laughs> Um, so you're going to want to pick a caliber that's really common and one that you feel super comfortable with. Obviously, ARs are great, um, but they're larger and they're not as mobile as a pistol. And you can hide a pistol yeah. if you need to, yeah. right? Um, but, you know, an AR is going to be much better in a firefight and it's going to be much better for hunting. So you're going to have to figure that out. Maybe you're going to have both. But yeah. again, yeah. it's hard to carry everything. So And I was thinking about, the, you know, you're like, well, I'll just carry one of those survival ones that have a changing, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. In all honesty, think of how accurate and how good of that weapon. Yeah. Like, well, how good is it going to be that it's not specific to that yeah. caliber? And they're, they're it's going to shoot. Yeah. Single shots, and too. It's, yeah, exactly. So it's like, 
Almost no, all of them that's are. not going to cut it. That's anymore. not going to cut it. So you're going to probably want to go with like a 223 or a 556, a nine millimeter, like a 45 caliber or a 22. Yeah. I'm going to say those are probably your best. And then you can I would go like with, to have, yeah, I'd like to have some sort of rifle and mm-hmm. a hand yeah. held. But again, that's weight. That's and it's going to be weight. hard to carry Just all that this alone. Stuff. Yeah. The bullets. Um, you're going to have to have a first aid kit. Um, like I said, I'm going to defer to Cam on this, but we don't really need to get into the weeds on that. But you're going to have to have something that, that really... Uh, it has to be a little more advanced than just your scrapes and bruises. Exactly. Like you're going to definitely have to close some wounds yeah. or expect to. Exactly. So be That's a lot that. of weight. That takes up a lot. I was just packing that up when we went to Yellowstone, and I mm-hmm. was like... <laughs> <laughs> trying to get it all in there. Zipping it in there. Yeah. Like a freak. Uh, illumination. You're going to have to have headlamps, probably, or a flashlight. I would say probably a headlamp's going to be the best. Um, yeah, and like it's either going to have to be solar-powered or you're going to be scavenging for batteries all the time. So I would that go solar-powered. You know what I mean? Yeah. And mm-hmm. I don't even have one of those. A solar powered headlamp? I don't, I don't think have I one. do either. But I actually just but saw a charger. That, I saw that Goal Zero actually just released a headlamp. Did they really? I'm gonna have to look Biolite at that. did too. Oh bio That's, maybe it was Biolite. Biolite's making maybe it was one. Biolite. I think they're kicking off I have a little Kickstarter going. Yeah, I have to check that out. I, I I'm curious about that one too. Yeah. Um shelter. You're gonna have to either carry a small tent or a tarp because if you think you're just gonna run around and live under a truck you know what i mean that's probably not going to yeah, happen you're all not time. waterproof yeah exactly so you're gonna have to have something like that sleeping bag or a, uh, you're gonna have to have a sleeping bag or a blanket or something uh basic hygiene you're gonna have to be able to have some soap yeah. you know maybe some toothpaste i yeah. don't know if you want to accelerate your depression you could drop all these and yeah. then you die pretty quick. oh it'd be horrible um you're gonna have to have I'll yourself on the dirt smell like a man <laughs> yeah you're gonna have to have an N95 mask at least, depending on what your situation is. Uh, yeah, just you know anything. I mean? mm-hmm. uh, compass, so you don't get lost, dummy. Paracord, <laughs> uh, and I would suggest you know like underwear. The the, the tighten you. Paracord underwear. Get your wife to sew you up some paracord yeah. underwear, or your man. Paracord wife beater, whatever. <laughs> um, I'd say get the Titan paracord that has like the fire tinder and the fishing line in it, because that way you know obviously that's a lot better. Yeah. Uh, I I would suggest survival guides and first aid guides as well in yeah. your pack. And then you're going to have to have extra clothing. This is all in one pack. So, um, yeah. and then with the firearms thing, you're also going to have to have ammo, extra ammo. Yeah. So, whatever. Try and do yeah, that. I don't know. Exactly. It's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. Super tough. Yeah. One one aspect that, that we didn't really add into here that you know, war- would warrant a whole other discussion is a companion, like a dog with you that yeah. would help your lone wolf situation but it also there's some downfalls to that too you know there is yeah. barking mm-hmm. and finding food for that animal and you're going to be protective of it because that's yeah. your only companion and that could get injured or yeah anyway that's a good discussion we should have that's that discussion one thing at some that point. we we just didn't have time to talk about in this yeah. podcast but we should have that discussion though at some point or like go that. the tactical or the geese yeah 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 yeah. like how hard is it going to be to find food for chickens. your geese yeah chickens and geese <laughs> You know, <laughs> like what happens when the tether cord yeah. like breaks and uh, your geese just run? I, that's going to be a horrible day, but you're going to have to be ready for it. I don't know how many places carry like a, a, a geese a geese collar, yeah, goose, goose collar, or or your badger. Remember we talked about having a badger as well. <laughs> badger. <laughs> you got my honey badger right here. You could talk to your honey badger. He could be your Wilson. Hey, you know. <laughs> Hey, little honey badger. <laughs> What'd you see down there today? <laughs> Chewing on your big toe. <laughs> <laughs> Scratching <laughs> you know, everything to pieces. Yeah. You go burrow in there. Get out <laughs> that stuff. Okay, anyway. Like a beast master with his ferrets, remember? <laughs> Just two badgers. <laughs> go get them. Sink them, boy. <laughs> um, so what kind of tactics do you need to... Uh, this one's t- this kind of tough. <laughs> Like basically, as a lone wolf, you got to think about ways to, to you know, be more stealth, be safer. So yeah, as a lone wolf, you have to ex- wolf. I think I said wolf. Um, as a lone wolf, I don't, as lone wolf, <laughs> wolf. Uh, you have to kind of. You're gonna have to try and accentuate the uh, the advantages that you have as yeah. a lone wolf, right? And so some of these tactics r- really do that. Yeah, I think. So just basic stuff of of you know, you want to travel probably at nighttime. Mm-hmm. You're you're less often to be detected, but you know it is a little unsafer to do that in terms of injuring yourself. Yeah. But um, you know, having these tactics of 
how do you take care of yourself when you're staying in one location? Yeah, you do need to get sleep and you, you don't have somebody watching over you. So you have to set up a perimeter and have you know traps and alarms. That's another thing that you've got to have carried with you. Um, constantly moving place to place. Does that mean you should sleep during the day? Probably. You that gonna, would be impossible. So you're going to have to carry a sleep mask too. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Bright and a sound machine. And a sound machine. <laughs> Just Solar powered, probably. <laughs> Cricket sound machine. <laughs> what about my humidifier? <laughs> yeah. I need a humidifier out there. I need my sleep You just have like all this freaking bed, bed, bath, and beyond crap <laughs> you around see. you. Yeah. I got sleep apnea. I need my CPAP machine. <laughs> <laughs> just like re- wheeling it around on a shopping cart or something <laughs> you know it's solar powered don't worry <laughs> don't worry about it i get a good night's rest <laughs> and you're coming across that guy in the forest it's like he pops He's up at night with a gun on he has, or p- pulls up his gun he has a freaking CPAP mask on <laughs> <laughs> what do you want good hell it's like darth vader in there <laughs> Um, so uh, another thing is you can't, as a lone wolf, stay in one place. You can't, you can't secure that place and defend that place very well. No, it's so hard. You're going to be constantly having to move place to place, um, and defend those places. And, you know, you remain in one spot, you're a target. Um, and, mm-hmm. and people are going to figure, well, there's, there's probably items there or there's loot and there's nothing you can do about that. They're going to come take it. Yeah. What are you um, going to do? Did you have anything else to add on tactics? I mean, no, that was kind of hard to like, just thinking about your whole game plan has to be way yeah, different. I mean, it's going to have to be much tighter and much, much more defined. I mean, there's like no room for mistakes in this. No, there's not. So another thing is skills. Like as, as a lone wolfer, woofer, you're, you're not going to, um, you're not going to be able to, <laughs> um, you're not going to be able to rely on anybody else's skills. <laughs> Right. I don't want to get a patch. Lone wolf. Lone, lone wolf. 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 We should make a patch. It's a lone wolf. Cash Cash pepper. Lone wolf. Lone wolf. Rockford Files Gate. Um, <laughs> so you're going to have to have a lot more skills than most people because you're going to have to rely on just your skills to get through. So you're going to have to have medical skills. Yeah. Like for sure, you know, but sometimes it's it really not going to do a whole yeah, lot you're of You're going to have to cover so many things and you're going to have to know some – you know, above beginner yeah. ability Stuff. in those areas. Yeah, you're going to have to learn how to suture with one arm, <laughs> probably. You know what I mean? Uh, my See, arm got blown off. <laughs> yeah, wrap it around my ear, pull, you know. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do, but it's going to be tough. So you're going to have to have a lot of, you know, basic wound care, splinting, you know, suturing, some sort of work, internal medicine type stuff. Yeah. I don't know what, but, right? Um, something, something gonna. Something gonna. Oh gosh, that just. Oh, fell. you're in trouble now. Okay. Um, security and defense is gonna be tough. I'm gonna have to fix this in a second. Uh, me- mechanical skills. Yeah. You're gonna have to know how to fix like everything. <laughs> I know. Like you're not gonna be able to rely on anybody. That's gonna be the hard thing. Yeah. And uh, survival skills. All types of survival skills. You know, food, water purification, hunting, scavenging, preserving, cooking, navigation, fire right. starting, shelter building. That all has to be you. Yeah. So good and luck. Think about those people that have that chance as a lone wolf. Yeah. Like this the all those survival shows. Uh-huh. You know. How long have they been doing this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and how long have they been developing all these skills? And they probably have a slim chance. You yeah. know, you've seen them get in trouble on oh yeah episodes yeah dude so how simple it is for them and they have all these skills mm-hmm. you know somewhat yeah we're screwed there's no way at, no there's no way at this time of my life i'm not gonna be i'm, I'm grouping it, it. Yeah, yeah that's that's really what my final thoughts is get a group <laughs> and make it good it. i'm grouping it so that's what we have as far as lone wolf goes yeah um, so if you want to do it go for it um you will <laughs> shorten up and decrease the population and yeah you absolutely will um so i'm gonna fix this while you do that reader. yeah, yeah. okay so, um, keep going. The uh, the, the review is down here, huh? Sorry. I'll do the reader. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we had a new sponsor last week, and we still have them now, and I want to talk about. Them. So, Bunker Days. Hopefully, you guys have checked that out. Uh, Bunker Days is a social platform for self reliance. The company focuses on combining knowledge, tools, gear into one community based website that promotes active preparedness. The company offers free ebooks. A monthly newsletter and growing online community community dedicated to providing knowledge around various prepping and self-reliance topics. Though their 
proprietary tools such as their situation and inventory plans or SIPs, users can tailor their prepping needs to the best meet their specific circumstance and track their pr- progress towards full readiness. I'm sure you could probably throw some lone wolf stuff in there. People probably give you info. I, that's not part of the reader. Um, there is also an inventory management tool to help keep track of all of your gear and an e-commerce store called Depot where you can purchase the latest survival and prepping goods. Bunker Days is the only website that offers a modern platform to simply or to simplify self-reliance and preparedness for everyone. Use code CPPSEP18, which is Casual Preppers Podcast. September 2018. Yeah. <laughs> CPPSEP18. CPPSEP18. Mm. <laughs> for, like <laughs> for a 10% discount on your order. <laughs> yeah, guys, go no, check no, out. No, t- CPP. <laughs> go S-A-P. check out bunkerdays.com. Use our code CPP SAP 18. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's really clean. It's an easy to use interface and yeah. it's awesome. It's just like all your prepper needs are right there. Yes, sir. Well, let's get on to the review. Yeah, we have a tack pack today. But they use that on their new. They're going to have to, man. So, what we got, bro? Uh, the first thing is the 556 tactical muzzle device. The S type compact tactical muzzle brake is designed for minimal weight, minimal added length, and maximum <clears throat> performance. Recoil and muzzle rise are minimal mitigated. Minimal added length? Yeah, in this three ounce package. The USA sourced hardened steel will up to the harshest, will steal up to the harshest treatments and conditions. This is the brake to end all brakes, and you will n- they will not, not let you down. Ugh. Yeah. That looks cool. Very cool. So if you if you got a AR, that's going to be fantastic. Next thing is Work Sharp Guided Field Sharpener. It's a $35 value. Um, and everybody who has a knife needs to get them sharpened. And so this is a fantastic way to be able to do that. This is like yeah. a, a nice sharpener. It's yeah. not one of the cheapies. Yeah, these are sweet. And mm-hmm. um, even your kitchen knives are going to need sharpening. Yeah, they will. I found that out this week. Um, breakthrough Clean Battle Rope. That's a $16 value. Um yeah. Yep, yep. Um, so basically, that is a bore uh, rehab. Um, you can clean out your uh, gun. Oh, no, that's that pretty freaking cool. Yeah, it's cool, huh? I like how the. I've never seen anything like that. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. It's very nice, right? And then you got a Tack Pack t shirt. $25. Tack Pack t shirt. That's a pretty sweet t shirt, too. Look, Boing. show the people. Yeah, that's nice. That is freaking cool. That's weird. nice. And you know what? We're actually um, debating on whether or not we should give this Tack Pack away. If you like this, tell us. Yeah, and we can create a thing. We're gonna create a giveaway of some sort and probably give this whole package away to some lucky winner. We will. I, I think we should say that this is an extra large shirt because. <laughs> oh yeah, it's that's kind of why we <laughs> can't use it because we're nutrition deprived. <laughs> yeah, we are nutrition deprived. So uh, look for a, probably a giveaway coming up soon with that sucker. And uh, awesome, awesome yep. stuff. Good job. It's Talk time about. for the quick and dirty medical tip. So, um, if any of you saw on Instagram, I posted a little thing about constipation. You did. Cause I liked it. Kind of a big deal. Um, it was it, on Facebook, too, wasn't it? Yeah, I think I did post yeah. it both. So, I just want to talk about your bowels because that's a common issue I see in family and primary care mm-hmm. all the time. Is it? So, this, uh, let's talk about constipation first. Mm-hmm. Um, millions of causes. Prescription meds, uh, heavy dairy diet, mm. vitamins, depression, dehydration, low carb diet, a lot of the things that you would face as a lone wolf. Yeah, absolutely. And um, constipation is really painful and can be a freaking nightmare. Yeah. And it can tear your insides apart, can cause hernias, um, fissures, oh. <laughs> hemorrhoids. Ugh. So, anyways, you gotta you gotta take care of your bowels out there. So, mm-hmm. some ways to prevent hard poop. Yes, you want it snake like. Remember, snake like, snake like, smooth and maybe bumpy. Mm, bumpy. bumpy. <laughs> um, so to prevent fruits and vegetables, obviously, yeah, um, good fiber and natural. Uh, I mean, Adam and Eve have done this forever, and that's why <laughs> they probably didn't have as many problems. High fiber diet. Um, too much fiber, though, you know, can be bad. But you just you got to get a good balance. Um, even now that we have access to all these things, we still don't do a very good job of it. It's going to be harder when you're eating out of a package. Yeah, that 
dehydrated foods don't lend to really good bowels. No, they don't. I, I can attest to so that. So you've got to you've got to prepare beforehand yeah. to have things to combat <laughs> these two issues: diarrhea and constipation. Yeah. So, um, and then you know, grape juice, pear juice, they're really highly osmotic, so they help pull fluids in and kind of bulk up your turd, mm. make it nice and slippery. Nice balanced diet, number one. So meds to help with constipation. Um, things that you really need to have in your supply, your, you know, your basement supply or whatever. Miralax. Miralax is always like the number one thing that we do for both um, adults and really? kids. Yeah. Uh-huh. So Miralax, um, yeah, you can look it up. Um, the way it works, it just pulls a bunch of fluid in and it's safe for tiny kids mm-hmm. and really old people. And so you need to have a bottle or two of that. Just a powder. Mm-hmm. It's easy to mix. Uh, it, it, mel- uh, it dissolves into juices really well. So that's like the number one thing that I would have to combat um, constipation. I'll have to get me some. Kids always have it. What's that? I'll have to get me some. I don't you have need any. to get some. I'm going to get some. So Miralax is a really good one. And then Senna is kind of a natural um, laxative. You can get it over the counter too. Um, uh-huh. It comes from the Senna leaf. Um, works really well for some. Um, but it's cheap and it's another thing that you should have before SHTF because Mm -hmm. you're not going to be digging turds out with your finger. You (laughs) might be, and you don't want to do that. No. Other things, mineral oil and some natural things, kai leaf, uh, berries, flaxseed, leafy greens, olive oil, sugar substitutes give me diarrhea. Oh, there you go. And most people. So you might as well, when you go to Denny's or wherever, just (laughs) throw a couple of those in your pack. Exactly. Hopefully, a manager at Denny's and like, sends bees <laughs> taking all my don't, natural, don't take or my unnatural stuff. crap. Um, coffee actually uh, helps constipation, even though caffeine can cause, um, you know, yeah. could cause a little constipation. That's most likely not going to happen. Okay. Coffee is actually really good to, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and then probiotics. Yep. You should be getting some of those. Diarrhea, many causes, poor diet, prescription meds, uncooked foods, crappy foods, people, stress. Eating. Infection. Eating. Yeah. <laughs> Anything. Just breathing. Yeah. Ice. Being alive. <laughs> For me, I think everything causes diarrhea. Water. Warm water, cold water. <laughs> yeah. Tap water, spray water. Basically living as a human <laughs> being causes diarrhea. Um, so prevention, uh, avoid caffeine because it does – stimulate bowels Mm -hmm. um avoid anti-inflammatories like heavy use avoid high sugar content like high yeah uh fructose syrup goodness soda yeah soda pops things like that um preservatives like things that are just loaded full of preservatives are going to cause you to poop your panties Mm. (laughs) and you never know you want to poop your panties. you don't want you don't want to poop your panties (laughs) that could be your filter (laughs) at any point yeah yeah. Um, so meds, you definitely need to get some Imodium and have it in your supply. That's mm-hmm. that's probably the most common thing. Diarrhea is tricky because if you do have an infection, you know you don't really want to slow it down much. But if you're trying to bug out and you're having to stop and turd every yeah. ten seconds, you need something to slow it down. Yeah. You, um, Pepto-Bismol is an awesome one too because it does have some antimicrobial. Um, oh, it does. Yeah. So oh, it can nice. help with like. Some infections in your stomach, plus it tastes delicious. I love it. it. I do too. I, I drink it all day long. love the crap out of it. <laughs> so maybe if you're depressed, you drink a little business. Yeah. Um, and then again, probiotics are really good for regu- regulating the bowels both ways. Um, and then you're definitely going to want some water mm-hmm. because you lose your fluid so fast when you have diarrhea. And those rehydration salt packets and ways to – Yeah. We've talked about ways to combat dehydration. So anyway, there's some basics to – Taking care of your buttholes. Mm. It's really important. Keep your b-holes in check, boys yep. and girls. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like trying to aim down a scope and you're sweating, shaking. <laughs> oh, man. I about had that when oh. we went hunting. Oh, you did, the did bowl. You? I was like, yeah. oh, I'm trying to hold the fart in. I'm like, <laughs> upwind. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. I'm drawing it. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna smell it oh thanks guys that's uh that's the podcast for today lone wolf uh send us an email message whatever uh wherever you can and we'd like to hear your yeah, thoughts tell on us, it tell us your thoughts yeah make sure you've subscribed make sure you've told all your buddies and friends and pals and family about the podcast 
so we can keep doing what we doing. Yeah, we want right? to keep growing because yeah. we want to keep doing it. Well, I don't care about all the goodies and stuff that yeah. we sometimes get. We really don't get that much, but mm-hmm. it's just I we love doing it. Oh, mm-hmm. I think we had an earthquake. I think we had a poltergeist. We're gonna go up top and it's gonna be leveled. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> had a nuclear attack. Well, and at least we're in the bunker. Yeah, we got that going for us. All right, boys and girls, thank you, and we will see you next time.